My name is Jason Dan from Humboldt, Iowa, and I'm a rodeo clown and an auctioneer. And I just got off the season 19 of Big Brother. Big Brother is a reality TV show, apparently the longest running reality TV show, where it is a social experiment where you are dumped into a house with zero contact with the outside world with 16 strangers that you've never met before in your life. And you are challenged to sustain a lifestyle within a time frame with these people based on limited resources and with the object of maintaining to the very end without being voted off by your peers. So it's a, it's a, it's a mind suck in there, it's a brain warp and you have no reference points for anything so you really start to uh, cabbage on to your memories of home and I, it, a very important part of my life prior to I guess being summons, I guess you could say for the show was I was anticipating the the pregnancy of my second child. I had no information or no news of that happening prior to me leaving the Big Brother. So when I won HOH and I got the letter in the news that my wife was pregnant, even Oli's wondering where his sidekick went. Gallon wants to tell you you have to win Big Brother because he's going to be Big Brother and Mommy's... Oh my God. <laughs> He's having a baby. I found out I was pregnant with Letty uh, June 30th, which was 15 days after Jason left for Big Brother. Um, and there was no way I could tell him uh, unless he won HOH. So I was waiting on him very patiently for like two months. I bawled. I completely bawled um, just like America did. and. That, like I said, it was it made it the whole freaking experience worth it because I had hormones going. You know, I didn't know what Big Brother was going to be like because I never watched a show. And so the unknown scared me. But I guess after he read our letter and he started winning competitions, um, they gave me goosebumps. <laughs> it was awesome. Um, we are having a farm safety day for our third graders from across the county. Um, we have three separate schools here. It's basically just to let the kids know the safety on the farm, how to be safe. We have grain safety over here. You know, you don't mess with soybeans and the fence. We have ATV safety, chemical safety, um, animal out here, and then we have tractor safety. We try to stress that, you know, it's fun on the farm, but yet you can still get hurt. My name is Edward Coffey, spelled with a Y, and I drive this school bus, and I'm, I'm retired. It's the best job I ever had. You get a lot of uh, uh, self, what, what's the word I'm looking for? Ratification. Like, ratification, that's what it is. When I first took this bus over, the, the kids were rough and rowdy, and, and now they're really respectable citizens, and I, I really treasure every one of these kids I drive, I do. I, I like the change of seasons, but I'd, I wish winter was a little bit shorter. As far as living here, I, I treasure the way we live. I like being able to be independent. I like to be able to go out and do my hunting. I don't like to be uh, like in New York City. I think sometimes those people hunt each other. And uh, I like to go fishing when I want to go fishing and just go down the street, or the what you would call a street, country gravel road, and uh, just I just really like being here. My best friend through high school and college. I mean, I I stayed at his house numerous countless times, and he had a sister that was five years younger than we were. I never, I mean, you just I never paid attention to her at all. I mean, she was just his younger sister. I just never. I honestly probably don't even think I ever made eye contact with her at all. I didn't even recognize her or even knew she existed. I moved away after I graduated college. I was in Tennessee. I came back on Thanksgiving. I, I had my girlfriend who I was going just virtually about to propose to. And I stopped at his house. I hadn't seen him for a couple months. And I stopped at his house uh, to see if he was home. And when I knocked on the door, Holly answered. I was... I never believed in love at first sight. In fact, I wrote a contract with my sister-in-law when I was like 14 stating that I would never buy a woman a ring because I thought rings were cliche and almost a slap in the face for women. 
I'm like, I feel like it's a, it, it's it's a negative for women. Like they, you know, like you, oh, you think that that went, you know, that diamonds are some sort of representation of them. I I I I just I viewed it as a negative, and I wrote a contract saying I would never buy a woman a ring. When I set eyes on Holly, I was like, if a woman wants a ring, I'm buying a ring. I've never been a uh, believer of love at first sight, but I had a I had a serious girlfriend I was about to propose to, and at that very moment, I was like, I will do whatever it takes to know and understand this woman. <laughs> and I, I couldn't control it. I literally could not control it. I tried to. I tried to act normal. My girlfriend and my basically fiance at the time could feel it. She could feel it. She's like, "Is there what? What's going on? You, you know what? You and this Holly have any?" I'm like, "No, no, 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 not at all." And she seriously was like, I, "There's definitely something going on with you. If you love her so much, why don't you marry her?" And I thought to myself, "Well, it's been two days." We're probably about due for some nuptials. So I was like, yep, that sounds like a good idea. So I sat her packing and started my journey with Holly. And it was literally that easy. I hope we eventually build a house someday um, and get to slow down a little bit and enjoy these little moments with our kiddos because I know it's going to go by way too fast. I'm telling you, everyone's so sick and tired of all the fake news that now they're just listening directly to motivational speakers, professionals in their business, whatever. So they're they're finding the people that they like and they just turn that on instead of the radio, instead of the news, instead of the TV. Is this something you're gonna do every day then? No, no, it's just they reached out to me. It's it's called Make Rodeo Great Again, kind of a play off of the presidency maybe. My name's Don Wagner and I'm a professional auctioneer. Jason was just getting out of auction school and, and wanted to be my partner and he'd work for me as a young man uh, at the livestock auction cleaning pens and haying cows and bedding pens. And so he was a natural. So I called him up and said, do you want to be my partner? It's like two acres different. Today you have to contend with uh, the online auctions and uh, we have experimented a little bit with some of the online auctions, uh, uh, but the, the most difficult thing there is uh, selling yourself that this is the way to do it rather than picturing it, put it online and, and going from there. <laughs> Let me look at that map again. How far south do we go? We have a big land auction coming up, and what we just did was we went into the FSA office, which is Farm Services Administration, or something like that. And they have all the actual, real, legitimate information for any ground that sells in a certain county, in a certain township. So. We don't want to take somebody's word for it when you're selling it at auction. You want to get the facts. And the facts say the acres, the payment for CRP, the, the process, you know, the, the, the regiment you have to follow, when to, when to plant, when to, you know, what years to do maintenance. And so that's what we were getting. Grab that. Yes, right there. No, no, grab it right there on my finger. Grab that. Yeah, no. Grab this one. That boy of mine, all I ever wanted was uh, a family and a son, children. I'm a huge, I'm just a, a huge advocate of children. The airports are my favorite, the most favorite thing to, get, to do now because after Big Brother, like the airport is the one place that everybody's like, oh my God, like, like do I? Wait, do we, I, have I, do we, have I, you, me, what, I'm like, big brother, oh my god, it's you, sir. It's the other way.
Chase at the airport has been like one of the highlights of my year. Literally, I've missed that guy so much and we've been trying to get together and we haven't been able to because we're always both so busy and then finally it worked out and I'm just happy to be here. Dude, this is like, I can't believe where I'm This definitely looks like Pennsylvania. Yeah. Like where I used to live, right before it snows. Yeah, it's supposed to be a wintry mix tomorrow. What does that mean? <laughs> what is a wintry mix? We it's like rain. rain, sleet, and snow. We have the one, just the rain. Yeah. I just feel like people don't get Alex. <laughs> you know, I didn't get Alex some of the time. Like, she really confused me to the point where I was like, what is she doing? Why is she saying, you know. But Alex is a really, 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 really good human. She's a super good egg. And, I mean, she's just vocal and opinionated. I'm Teresa Pollock, and I work at Snyder's in Humiston. I've been working here for close to six years. What I like about Humiston is the fact that we're all a small community, and we have big family pride, and we all get along really well. I'm Jill Tuath. Uh, I'm the current owner of Snyder's in Humiston, Iowa. My parents had the store before me. Uh, if we make it till Memorial Day this year, it will be 69 years. Um, my husband and I moved here from Seattle 15 years ago to help my mom, and here we are. The thing I like best about my job is just meeting all the different people that come in. We get a lot of people from away from here. Uh, some have connections to Southern Iowa. Some just happen to be driving through and stop. And it's just interesting to hear what they what they think when they come in and see a store that's been around this long and doesn't have a POS system and does things the old-fashioned way. Humiston is very, very fortunate in that in the last probably seven to ten years we've had a lot of young families move into our community. A lot of, a lot of that is because of our school system. Uh, they just want to get their kids out of these big schools into a little bit smaller uh, classroom size. We have wonderful teachers. Um, the one thing Humiston really needs is a hardware store. things I've ever seen. We crashed into a bunch of pipes because apparently you need hydraulic fluid to make the brakes work, which we didn't have, so we plowed into a fence. <laughs> plowed. Oh my god! Wow. We're coming in hot! <laughs> oh, oh my god, slow down! Slow down, slow down! Last well, time the brakes didn't work, good call. Yeah! <laughs> my bull, Oli, wants for nothing, right? Like, he absolutely gets everything he wants, but he's like my my main pal, my, my compadre. My other bulls, like his his offspring, the bulls in training, my horses, they tend to take second chair, so to speak. So that affects me a little bit. That tends to be a problem. Uh, I need to clone myself. Jason was lying. There is nobody in this town. We're literally like the only people here right now. <laughs> Stretchy dress. <laughs> yes. Excellent. Excellent. Oh, they have nice boots here. That yeah. is true. Yeah, yeah. Is it a good one? Oh, it is a full one. Oh, no, it's a jacket. Are you, are you getting ready to shut down? No. Oh, okay. Hello there. Oh, my gosh. I feel like I know you. <laughs> <laughs> there were a few times I didn't like you. Really. She was just like she was in Big Brother. Uh, what a sweetie. Tiny little thing. Uh, just full of life. Um, uh, just, just fun, fun, fun. Oh, welcome to Iowa. <laughs> yes, uh, yes. Awesome, awesome. Hey, yeah. I saw that kitty. You both kids of yours yes. the other day. What a sweetie. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. She's, I couldn't have got it. Oh my, what can I say about Jason? Uh, well, I've known him since he was probably three years old, and uh, just it's been fun watching. Uh, I was away from here during his growing up years, but just to see him back and involved in the community and um, just a good kid. She's done. <laughs> That's nice. Yeah. It's so nice to see you. Oh, and my how are you guys? 
I am so thrilled to be meeting Alex. I never missed a single show because of Jason. And then as I got to know her, she was one of my top favorites. She's right up there with Jason. She is so true to herself. When I met her, I felt like we'd been friends forever. What are you doing, just going to Wojo's? No, I actually stopped by your auction. Oh, good, Yay! good, yeah, check it out, check it out. I did, yeah. Good, well, you yeah. know, I can... I hope the that. weather's good. It'll... Well, tomorrow it will be good. Today's junk, and then this one's on the 29th of March, so... Mm -hmm. We're just slowly gaining on stuff like that through there, so... We can see that. Yeah, we're headed to the meet and greet right now, so if you want, just stop by and eat at the school. Oh, it's okay. five bucks, it's free will donation, soup, supper. I mean, that's what me and Alex are going to do, promote the... the the prom. So. Right. It's the prom? It's the prom, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Paul. Bye. Take care. Yeah, you too. I feel Come like on. I got I feel like I got beer breath. Like I feel like I should stop by the I feel like I should stop by Casey to get gum or something. Casey. Don't, does my breast smell like beer? I can't smell I had one beer. When you blow out a heart, I just smell something. It does smell like beer? When you blow out a heart at me. We brought you a mountain, dude. No, oh, no. Oh, thank you. Sweet, sweet. I can't drink it though until after one. Okay, so where are we going? Uh, what? Not much. Probably downstairs. I think we got you guys have some. Oh, yeah. Right, me. That's for sure. For sale. It's one of the auction. Auction. You put that in the back. <laughs> okay. You gotta watch this one. She'll be watching in a second. I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm you can help me. Yeah. Better get Alex over here. Game yeah, that's gonna happen. There's kids. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, go ahead. You sign it. Okay, I'll hold it. She wants to sign it too. Oh, right on. Good call. Good call. <laughs> oh, this is not on hers. Not on hers. Outstanding shirt. That is a shirt. I like it. Where did you get that? I don't know. <laughs> How are you? You guys need a picture by yourselves. You mind if I take a little bowl right No, go ahead. Anything you want. Let's see if it, if it comes out. We got time. Well, you can. You, can, you, can, you, can, you guys can hang out till that thing. What are you pounding for? Jason, get over here. Come on, man. It's Alex, all the way from Calabasas, California. I don't live in Calabasas. The Kardashians are there. Oh, dang it. I'll let, I'll just let me lie I'm to like you then. I'm like 25 minutes from there. <laughs> Get this one. Nice oh, try to smile. Oh, ah! <laughs> there you go, pal. Uh, this event is to raise money for Africa and a bunch of gifts. And <laughs> Uh, right now we have around 175 people showed up. A lot more than we expected, actually. Yes. <laughs> I think so many people showed up today to see Jason and Alex. This is it's like celebrities of the town, yeah. small town Iowa. We don't get that very often. I think Jason and Alex are really nice, fun people, both outgoing and loud. But I love that. <laughs> yeah, good role models for everybody. You ready? Oh, I got. Wait, wait. I'm ready now. <laughs> I've known Jason for quite a while, uh, actually some rodeo stuff that we've done together and uh, I raise bucking bulls myself so I know a lot about you know his lifestyle and uh, it's just cool on the uh, Big Brother, uh, first time I ever watched it but him and uh, Alex definitely were the best ones out there. This picture here is just some of the uh, bulls that I raise on my ranch and uh, this one here has been in the uh, professional bull riders uh, PBR and so it's uh, it's fun just to raise these I mean they're just like humans they all have different personalities and everything I bought a valent or a, what's it, Patty's cake, 150 bucks for after prom fundraiser. 
Bought a triple berry pie for $65. My kid goes to a different school and we had an FFA fundraiser and I ran a pie up to $700. Did not get it. <laughs> but I end up two nights ago there, and that was three years ago, but two nights ago I bought one for $325. <laughs> so I'm savoring that. I'm eating one piece a night. 40 bucks for a nice basketball with all the signatures on it. 40 bucks. How about a Seriously? 40 bucks, I believe you would. 40 bucks. Now 50. Now 50. Now 50. How about a 50? Now 60. Now 60 bucks. How about a 60? Now 80. Now 80. Now 80 bucks. 80 bucks, would you? You gotta buy a tracker and a bunch of stuff tomorrow. 80 bucks. How about a 80? Anybody 80? Anybody 80? Anybody 80? Now 90. 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 80. Peggy, right? 80 bucks? That a girl. All right. My name is Erin. Right now I'm mostly a stay-at-home mom, but I work at my kids' school part-time. I do like my job. I get to work with kids that need just a little bit of extra help every day, and it's kind of fulfilling, I guess. Humiston is home. It's just full of family, really, and not like blood family, that we're not all related. <laughs> um, but they all pull together. If there's anything that ever goes wrong, everybody kind of pulls together and and you just never have to question that you'll be supported. And I've moved away. I don't even live in Humiston and, and I could speak firsthand on that. So right now, um, I am setting up for a concession stand. We've baked the last three days because Jason's family and he kind of uh, gets people to do things when he needs a favor. <laughs> About 21 years ago, Don Wagner stopped by my house and said that my neighbor was going to have an auction and he said, I told him you would help him. Well, I said yes and I guess I've been with him ever since. Humiston is like all so small communities in Iowa in general, probably, northern Missouri. Um, the towns, the counties have low, low funding. Uh, the there's properties that need to be cleaned up, um, uh, things of that nature. Uh, the money isn't available to the communities uh, like it used to be. I'm Kendall Swan, and I work for uh, Wagner Den Auction Company, and I've uh, been with them for quite a, quite a number of years, and. Uh, just enjoy uh, having these auctions and setting stuff up and uh, finding all the treasures. You just never know what you're going to find whenever you uh, come to an auction like this and set it up. So it's just a lot of fun. Enjoy working with Jason and Don and Art. They put on a great auction and uh, just all the treasures. Whenever you're uh, setting these sales up, you just never know what you're going to find in, in each and every box. Uh, it's just uh, little trinkets and uh, surprises and everything like that that you find. Humiston is great. Uh, worked up there. I worked at the sale barn there for a number of years. I'd like to see it get back into business. Uh, it's just a great farm community uh, all around. Hey, I need that wrench in case something goes down. <laughs> I'll hit somebody with a wrench. You want that bag in the back? Yeah. I mean, we got. There's, I know it's Hello. awful. Hey, Sal. Nice to meet you. Hey, what's up? We just crashed. Nice car hearts. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I brought them. No, you didn't. No, I did not. I brought them from the dental, though. <laughs> oh, by the way, are you filming this? Okay, check this out. Gold dang! I start wearing one of these, and I won't be like whistle nut. <laughs> but I also have some friends that he had a meet and greet a couple weeks ago. They're absolutely the same way. They're crazy about Big Brother. Yeah, we love so, so one of the gals this morning, Dawn was talking, she wants that red car. She wants to bid on that red car. And she goes, well, how do I go about doing it? If we can't make it there, well, there's this online stuff. Well, how do, how's the online work? I go, I don't know. You're a Big Brother fan. Come and find out. She'll teach you, she'll yeah, show you how to do the online auction. Yeah, exactly. So, so we'll kind of, you know. It'll be fun. I'm yeah. excited. Yeah. I'm excited. So, yeah, All right, good. game day is almost here. We'll be here. Set, I mean, we're, we're, 15 hours away. <laughs> Whistle not, you're the best. <laughs> you guys I are the love best. You. <laughs>
feet on a bit of bumper too when you even over the cup. Art's gonna blend some. There we go. Got a pair of them. Dollar two. Have a two-dollar bit of even bumper two. Have a two-dollar bit of 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 bumper two.
and it's muddy, greasy, and we're just having a struggle with it, just come back when it's dry. She still rides the mower. Let's not bounce the hell out of her. Yeah, she still rides the mower. So uh, we'll just be respectful of the property. They're going to give you a month. But any arrangements you want to make, if it takes longer than that or prior to that or anything, you can you can absolutely talk to them. They will entertain any thoughts. Arthur, do you have anything to say? It's 10 o'clock. Anybody else have anything to say? It's sale time. It's sale time. We'll start today. Don, tell me what you got first. Jason has a magnetic personality. He's always been well liked. Uh, always had that big infectious smile on his face no matter no matter what the situation was. So the big brother hasn't made him any more popular uh, in his community than he was before. Now it's exposed him to many more people that he's associated with now and been and and is friends with uh, those folks, but uh, he's he, he was well known, excuse me, he was well known from his uh, other profession, which is rodeo clown. His rodeo clown name is Whistlenut, and uh, the pet bull that he rides is Oli. And uh, there would be very few bulls that you can put a saddle on and ride down on middle of Main Street on a Fourth of July parade with 10,000 people screaming and hollering, and he's got one. And uh, so he had a great act. Many people in the three, four state area here where we live, knew him from his, from his clowning. I remember Jason coming up with Whistlenut because he, whenever he would say his S's, and I'm not saying that he has a, a lisp at all, but he would be silly and he'd be like, so, you know, and so that's where Whistle came from, and then he's just a nut anyway, and when he said Whistlenut, I said, that's it, that's the name. <laughs> when you deal with Jason Dent, when you deal with Whistlenut, there, will, there won't be a problem because as long as it can be talked about and hashed out and thought out, it can happen. And that's the way I take everything. So I just always go forward if, at full speed ahead. And if I run into a problem, I look for a solution. I intend to stay in the auction business as long as I'm uh, still able physically, mentally, emotionally to do it and as long as I feel as though I'm still effective. And at this point in time, I'm 74 years old, I still think I, I do a, a good effective job for the people we're working for. And I want someone to tell me, even not, it, it'll be fine if Jason wants to tell me someday, it's time for you to, to drive the truck and leave the selling to me. And that'll be fine with me, I understand that. Documentaries, and why I agreed to do a documentary, is because well, I have nothing to hide. I literally have nothing to hide. And I literally feel like people would be dumbfounded and almost awestruck if they followed me around. And it's not cocky. It's not even confident. I feel like it's just a fact. This type of hustle that happens in my world, my life, is almost insane. You literally are doing a different task that requires different skills every 15 minutes of your awake. You might wake up, you're going to do your chores, you have to know animal husbandry, you have to understand livestock, you have to understand uh, what you're looking at when you see them, you have to know if the weather is changing them, you have to know when to worm them, you have to know when to feed them, you have to know if the feed is working for them, you have to know if they're water. I mean, you can literally tell when they're not drinking water, if they're not eating, if they don't like the hay, you know, if the weather's affecting them. And the second you're done with that, you might go change the oil in your truck. So you have to know how to, how to monkey wrench a mechanic. You have to know if your motor sounds the same, if your motor is sounding weak, if it's not pulling a trailer, if it is pulling, you have to know how to hook up a trailer. You have to know what trailers are about. You have to understand whether you, you, you have to know the feeling of it with if the tire's low. You have to look around. You have to, I mean, you have to be so conscious of your surrounding so much that I feel like a documentary might not even do it justice. 
So, I have no problems with a documentary because it's going to be hard to believe. And you're going to cut half of it. You're going to try. You're going to try to do it to the best of your ability. But it's like when I build metal art. When I build metal art, it doesn't give you its reality until you set eyes on it and tangibly grab it. So you can take a picture of the metal art that I build and you see what the picture depicts. It will be nothing like the feeling you get or your description of it when you see it slash grab it. And I feel like that's what the documentary is to my life. I mean, you're not really going to understand the honest to God ins and outs, even if you're watching it, because it's that intense. So if a little bit of this leaks through, and you can feel a little bit of the hustle that happens in the Midwest for a minimal amount of pay, I've succeeded.